Hey, this is Cam from Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to show you how I built a crate for the most expensive table I've ever built, and even show you how they loaded it. This is pretty crazy, and it scared me quite a bit. Stay tuned. This crate was going to be a little different than you might see for like a solid wood conference table or even a big granite slab, for instance, because this was wood and epoxy. I needed it to be really well supported at the same time as being a little bit flexible so any kind of jarring bumps wouldn't actually crack the epoxy. And I might have been a little bit overkill, but I wanted to make sure I gave it its absolute best chance to arrive there safely because this took me a long time, a ton of time just consulting with the customer, the client, and really there was no chance to redo this table. And essentially all I'm doing here is building a completely flat box. And that's why you saw me joining the two by fours at the start because the two by four is kind of straight, but not perfectly straight. And I wanted a perfectly flat box to support my epoxy and wood table. So that's all I'm doing, building a nice, good, square, flat box. And everything was a little bit more difficult for this table because the table itself is about 120 inches. So the crate was gonna be about 125 inches which meant none of my eight or nine foot two by four regular stud length was gonna work. So everything had to cut a little bit long. So that's why some of those you saw me extending with multiple two by fours. This OSB is gonna be the complete underside of the crate attached to some two by fours that are gonna allow access for a forklift. So no real reason to use OSB over the sanded plywood. It's cheaper, but it's also a little bit heavier. So you pay more in shipping, but cost less to purchase. So used it for the underside, two two by fours next to, kind of nailed together in order to uh, give that access to extra long forklifts because believe it or not, there actually are forks that are long enough for a crate this long. And since everything about this crate was larger than a four by eight sheet of plywood or OSB, it had to be built in multiple sections. So did two sections for the underside, I'm gonna nail them on independently and then in that center two by four, I'll nail those together to really kind of complete it. And this was a very sturdy, very solid crate in the end. Again, probably a little bit overbuilt, but that's kind of how I build everything. And if you're curious, the way this is constructed, there's actually not a lot of pressure on any individual nail holes. So it's not like I have to use a framing nailer or screws to attach this. I'm just using a 16 gauge brad nailer, it's a porter cable, regular old Home Depot finish nailer. So nothing fancy, but it held plenty strong. And if you are like me and a one-man shop that needs to move some heavy things around from time to time, I built this overhead hoist setup. And I actually have a whole separate YouTube video and blog on putting together this hoist setup. So I'll include a link in the description below because I actually built it just for this table project, just so I could have a way to turn it by myself. And it worked pretty good for putting this crate together too. A lot of people are surprised that I respond to essentially every single question that you guys leave below in the comments section. And that's because I know how frustrating it is if there's a part that's rushed or a part that doesn't quite make sense to not be able to understand exactly how I did something. Or maybe you guys have a suggestion for a one-man shop solution that I haven't thought of. So I appreciate all the suggestions, all the comments, all the encouragement, even the trolls. Leave any, any comments of things you don't like. So None of it bothers me. I will respond to you. I do appreciate all that. And if you like this video, I do appreciate if you hit that subscribe button because it really helps me, enables me to keep making more content just like this. Anyway, back to the build. I'm using these foam insulation sheets from Home Depot. And this was inch and a half. I normally use three quarter inch for smaller projects that I'm shipping, but I wanted to do it a little bit thicker for this huge table. So these are inch and a half. They're really cheap, affordable, really lightweight easy to cut down. They are my favorite thing for making these crates. So definitely go get some of these sheets from Home Depot for your crate. This was another part of the project that was a little bit overkill, but I went ahead and did it anyway. And this was just to keep that insulation sheet from sliding around with some general purpose caulk that I had sitting around. This next part might be the most important aspect of this particular build. And I got this tip from my friend James up at Lux Edge. And while I ship like one table a month, they ship like 10 tables a month. So they had actually had some tables damaged in shipping over the previous years. And I think he told me they got this tip from the guys at Black Forest and they ship even more tables than that. So basically I just cut a bunch of strips about eight inches wide. And this is gonna provide a little bit of flexibility and preventing the table from potentially cracking if it was really, really jarred. I apologize I don't have footage of us setting this down, but it took about six guys to set this down there. It probably weighed close to 600 pounds, was by far the heaviest table I've ever built, and was quite the job for a one-man shop. I didn't want to just put a moving blanket over this because I think that could cause some little micro scratches, especially in that resin. So I put this painter's plastic down because it's going to be a really non-abrasive barrier, taped it in place. Then I went ahead moved on, put some moving blankets down. This crate actually got pretty expensive by the time I was added moving blankets and all the materials into it. 
but again had to make sure it was absolutely safe the whole way there again another one and a half inch sheet of foam on top to give one additional layer of protection in case they guys set anything on top of this crate during shipping which they shouldn't do but you never know you might wonder why i didn't calculate all my measurements ahead of time and cut all my pieces and then just put it together and i find that i can build a more accurate crate if i build it around the table so I put everything in place, then measure exactly what I need, and that way I'll know that it's going to be completely snug in the crate when it's done. I decided to add two by fours for vertical support again, so if another crate was to be set on top of this, there would be a little bit of vertical support with these two by fours that I am adding here. And again, I'm just using a 16 gauge nailer, nothing really load bearing about those as long as they remain vertical. And you'll see why it's nice to build the crate around the table right here is I can come up and build it exactly flush with that top of the foam. And it's really next to impossible to calculate by the time you have the moving blankets and the plastic and the foam, everything in there to get that right just spot on to the eighth of an inch. So that's why I like to build it around the table instead of calculating it before and then putting all my pieces together at the end. Make sure you don't forget to allow access for a forklift though. And the front of this is where the forklift's gonna have access. So make sure you can still get some forks through there. And that would be an easy thing to forget when you're just building a box around your table here. But I'm allowing four extra long forks to have access to both sides of this crate. And if you decide you need to calculate how big of a crate you won't need to make for your particular table, I like to add a certain number of inches depending on how much foam I want to put on the side. And so since I knew I wanted to have an inch and a half sheet of foam plus moving blankets on each side, I added about four or maybe five inches total all around the perimeter. So that way I get this inch and a half sheet foam just perfectly snug in there with the table and the blankets and everything to keep it from having any wiggle room whatsoever. And if there is a little more wiggle room than you like, just add more foam or something to kind of shore up that space. The top was pretty simple. I just used that same sanded plywood that I used for the sides, cut some pieces big enough that they overlap those two by fours on the outer edge, gave them some rigidity with these one by fours, came through, nailed all the pieces together, made a nice little grid like that. And now I'm gonna have a good solid piece to screw down into those two by fours. A good tip that I learned after building this crate was to put a mark at every screw hole so that way the person disassembling it knows exactly where every screw is that needs to be taken out. And this was a real thing. I couldn't believe this is actually how they did it. I thought this was a joke when I saw this. But apparently this is a real moving company and this is actually how they move items too big to get on a single lift gate. So enjoy this. I'll talk through part of it, but this scared the heck out of me. Yes, they are literally backing the truck up with my $16,000 table suspended between two trucks, and it somehow worked. didn't mention the legs on this and believe it or not those were pretty easy instead of building a giant crate we actually just wrapped them in moving blankets and some plastic wrap threw them on top of the crate and that's all we had to do to include the legs in this crate so pretty simple addition to avoid building a giant crate Every week I like to give a little bit of credit to the people that make it all the way to the end of the video. So start your question or comment with the state you live in, the country you live in, or both. And I will know you watched the entire video and I promise I will answer all of your questions first. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks again.